Hello everyone and welcome to the Stuntion Editor tutorial for Legends of Grimrock 2. Uh, in this tutorial we're gonna create our own weapon. Uh, so I'm gonna fire up this uh, testing dungeon that we have going over here. Uh, and I've placed a bow here on the floor just to show you guys that uh, every weapon in the game consists of two things. Uh, it's uh, the 3D model which we can see in the game world and as soon as we pick it up uh, it turns into a 2D sprite. So we need to create both a 3D model and a uh, two-dimensional sprite if uh, we are going to create our own object uh, within the game that can be placed into the inventory or can be placed into the hand. So uh, in Blender uh, I have modified a bow. I have created this bow and I have put some blades on it and, and ma made it uh, yeah, try to try to make make it cool, but hopefully I su succeed it. So uh, this uh, this bow is using a material that is both available in Grimrock One and Grimrock uh, Two. So I have the added bonuses of uh, seeing it with the material on. Uh, once you have created your weapon or, or created your item uh, in the in your three D program of choice. Uh, we can go to file and we can export it out to an OPG format and uh, like always uh, I'm going to export it with the smooth groups, right normals, triangular the faces and as OBG groups and minus C forward. So I'm going to rename the name this uh, Heartseeker like this and export it out. Uh, then of course I'm gonna fire up uh, the same tool we used in the previous tutorial which was the Grimrock model toolkit and if I import this object from my desktop here like this you can see that it has been imported so here we have it uh, there's one material that is not correct or no more than one so This is the long bow. Fist dagger. Yeah, we need to change this to long bow like this. So now it's uh, correctly, correctly skinned or, or has the correct textures, and uh, we can go ahead and recalculate the tangents and then just save it out to our dungeon. And I've already done so, I've saved it out as heartseeker.model. Uh, now comes the process of creating the two-dimensional uh, reference representation of uh, this object within the game. So inside Photoshop I have, I have loaded up the item Atlas for Legends of Grimrock 1. And I'm just going to go through uh, what this item Atlas is and, and how we use it. Uh, I'm going to go into the grids and grid line every 75 that's about right because uh, every sprite or every uh, every item has a 75 pixels by 75 pixels so if we just apply this view 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 grid like this so now we have a grid line that separates this atlas into its items and of course since this is in within the game world and uh, uh, if you pick something up uh, you can s you can see through uh, the item you know only the item is visible and that is because it has a uh, alpha channel mask applied to it so if you just look at the alpha mask you can see that all the black uh, blackness here is transparent and the white are uh, are the ones that we are able to see so uh, if you're going to create your own items uh, you of course need to apply the correct alpha mask uh, this is the items from Grimrock 1 uh, I have created something here called item atlas and here I have created uh, two icons uh, one for the bow and one for the power attack of the bow and uh, this is something I have saved as item atlas dot dds just directly into my 
uh, documents, almost human, let's remove two dungeons, textures. So here I have my item atlas. Uh, here's the treasure map that we made in a previous tutorial and and some stuff I was uh, working on before. Uh, so creating these two items, uh, when I've done that uh, I'm able to bring the item uh, into the game. Uh, so how do we do that? Uh, if I open up the items Lua and this is, I, once again, this is just one of the scripts that is inside your mod asset folder script and here is something called items lua. Uh, here I need to place a definition of uh, my weapon or, or my item and I have already made that definition here and I'm gonna copy it over to the correct place and go through the definition with you. So I'm defining an object and uh, I'm gonna turn off the sound. Uh, defining an object, the name is Heartseeker and uh, this is just the internal name. Uh, the base object is it's simply a base item so it takes some components along with it for an item. Uh, the components we are defining are of course class, uh, model and we point to where I have exported the model. One thing to note that even though our models have dot model uh, always inside scripts we use .fbx to uh, to define them. Then we have uh, the item itself and this is the user interface name and this is the w one the player sees so this is uh, the name is Heartseeker and this is where we point to our own uh, atlas for the 2D sprite. So in this uh, particular instance uh, I'm saying that uh, items atlas DDS under textures mod assets is the atlas I'm going to be using and the graphical index is zero that is because this is zero and this is one and if we go to the Grimrock items uh, from Legend of Grimrock 1 this is zero this is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve this becomes 13, 14, 15 and so forth. So this is how we define this. Uh, the spaces that we have here are unusable and the reason why for instance if I, I turn on the grid also on this here uh, you can see that here comes some unusable spaces and that is simply because a DDS file needs to be uh, within the power of four pixels in order to work so we cannot cut this you know cleanly as we want to but it works in the same way 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 and 13 is in the next row so uh, this is my atlas and since the bow is in the first slot I say that his graphical index is 0 and graphical index is 0 then we give the bow some weight uh, and then we give it some traits and if you watch the tutorial where we were doing some alcove puzzles you know that uh, this is where uh, we can define our own traits on our own weapon so for instance if I want this item to have the same you know be in the same category as other missile weapons uh, I will have to place the traits on them uh, I also played a trace called uh, traits called bow. I don't even think that's <laughs> that's that's a new trait I have defined. And then I give it some description. And uh, then we have a ranged attack class. And this is just the basic uh, basic attack uh, attack power. Uh, it increases accuracy by ten. Since I want this item to be special, and uh, uh, the ammo it uses is arrow and the attack sound is swipe bow since this is a bow. Uh, cooldown is is two I think most weapons are three so this is a fairly fast bow and I want the dexterity stat to be the damage modifier on the weapon I don't want this to be strength or, or something like that. And The damage type is physical since we're shooting arrows and I had a requirement on it 
I wanted people to be able to use the bow when their missile rank was three or higher. But since we are, you know, just playing this with our startup party, I think nobody has, uh, uh, no, nobody has uh, missile weapons. So, in order to demo this, uh, I simply commented it out. So, so there we have it. Uh, if I Oops, sorry. <laughs> if I reload the dungeon now, I would I have some item now here called Heart Seeker. And if I go to the outside and if I place it next to the other bow and we play, you can now see that we have my bow uh within the world and we also have the the long bow from from the original Grimrock 2. Uh if I pick up the the bow, and the bow of course is pretty useless without an arrow, like this. So if I pick up the bow and if I pick up the arrow, I'm able to shoot. So if I shoot, it fires an arrow. I can pick up the arrow again. If I don't have an arrow, it says no ammo. And of course, since this is using the graphic atlas uh, I provided. Uh, that means that uh, it has the correct uh, correct uh, graphics when we are placing it in the hand or if you are placing it in the inventory. How did I make this graphic atlas? <laughs> really easy. I si in the GMT I simply uh, took away the grid and I think I positioned the bow some way. I <laughs> I took a screenshot, I rotated the bow, and uh, that is basically, <laughs> this is basically just a screenshot of the, of, of, of the bow from within the GMT, uh, so, uh, yeah, I didn't hand draw anything. So this is the bow we are using, and, and it simply works. So, uh, let's take a look at how we can uh, make a secondary attack uh, to this bow. And since this uh, bow has some blades on it, and and, and I, I want this bow also to be used as a melee weapon, or have the ability to be a melee weapon. So let's go back here into into this. And since I am terrible at typing, I have prepared this in advance, like this. And I am going to copy this over. So what we have done here we have the same object, it's the heart seeker, it's the same base item, the same model, uh, it's the same class, it has the same user interface na a name, but there are some differences here. This one is a new one, graphical index power attack 1. That means that this is 0 and this is 1, so the item turns blue and uh, you can see the, the alpha channel is uh, around it so the item turns blue when I'm going to use the power attack or, or the secondary attack. Uh, other things like these are the same. This is the same except for uh, we have secondary attack here which is called slice and I have defined a class down here which is a melee attack class and the name is slice so uh, that's how the engine knows which power attack to use. So secondary action is slice, so if I hold down the right mouse button on the uh, it item, I will go over to this one. So uh, slice is a melee attack, while this is a ranged attack. Uh, in the melee attack, uh, we have some you know, attack power. Uh, I still have the dexterity as the damaging stat. Uh, the swipe is horizontal. This is the graphics that get displayed when you swipe a weapon in front of the body. This is a s the sound. This is a swipe special. Uh, and uh, we have some cooldown and then an energy cost. And of course, I had a requirement, but the same since I'm, I have the starting party uh, demoing this, uh, I, I commented that out. And also, I lowered the energy cost so the the newbies, uh, the new party here can can you know can show us how the weapon works. So if we save this, 
and uh, we go back to the game and we reload and press play uh, I will have a new bow here and you can see it's called Heartseeker uh, it's damage plus dexterity it gives plus 10 to accuracy but then it has the special attack of slice with an energy cost of 5 which is of course really really low but uh, since we are demoing this uh, that's what we have it at now so if I shoot from the bow it just shoots and if I hold down the power attack the item turns to blue and uh, it has this blue glowing effect which uh, just calms I, I didn't create that anyway but and if I release we see the you know the swipe in front of the party and of course I missed but let's bring in let's bring in some poor defenseless turtle here here we go so if I power attack the turtle I can now melee melee with this bow as, as well as shoot from it so this turtle is quite tough no oh. Burn. Burn. I killed the turtle. Feel like a hero. Uh, so this is this is the short and sweet of how to create items. Uh, uh, of course, uh, we can we can create you know more items. We we can create our own 3D models. Uh, we can bring them into the game using the GMT, and then we can define them like this within within the within the game. Uh, I also have another item here which is called the elemental bow and I'm gonna show that to you guys as well. Says that is quite quite good. And by the way these chains uh, they come from uh, a guy on the forum called Akroma. I would I would check out his work and see what's, what he's up to because uh, these uh, he's he's experimenting a lot with uh, items and daggers and, and stuff like that so keep an eye on him uh, this is a object which I called the elemental bow uh, it I'm using the same model and I'm using the same graphics and everything uh, later down the road I will create a, a new 3d model for this bow but what this bow does is it doesn't have an ammo uh, the initial class is a s cast a spell, so this bow shoots a fireball spell, and it doesn't require any any ammo to be able to to shoot it, and it also it doesn't waste any energy, which is is quite overpowered. But uh, I'm just I'm demoing this for you. But the secondary attack on this bow is called Elemental Storm, and if we go down to an Elemental Storm, which is this that also shoots a fireball but it has a chain action called elemental storm 1 and the chain action delay is 0 0.2 that means when I do the secondary action which is called elemental storm this attack fires and 0 0.2 seconds later this attack fires also and this attack shoots a frostbolt and that's also a chain action which fires a potion bolt and that's also a chain action that fires a lightning bolt that's also a chain action that fires a dark bolt so the secondary the secondary power of this bow is that it shoots all the elements uh, shoots all the bolts of the elements so uh, let's save this dungeon and, and reload so now we should have uh, we should have Elemental bow. We don't have it. What bow of elements? What did we call it? No. Ah, I didn't save the script. Sorry, guys. Save and reload. Elemental bow. So I'm gonna place that here in front of the party, and I'm gonna place some some mummies maybe yeah we'll let's place a mummy patrol here 
So now we have two bows. This is the heart seeker. This is the one I don't want. This is the bow of elements. So you can see that it's just a missile weapon. It doesn't show us any any damage or anything since this is a spell component. But it has a special attack called Elemental Storm. So if I just place it in hand without any ammo and shoot, it should say a firebolt. So if I shoot this, it's damaging quite a lot. And if I hold this down, like this, and a fire, it's completely overpowered. So <laughs> note to self, nerf the elemental bow. But as you can see, uh, it's this is this is the chain attack and. Uh, I'm working on uh, finding some offsets to the to the to the spells. They're all shooting in the same straight line. But if you played the original game, you would know the meteor storm, where you had fireballs coming in from you know different angles. And I'm working on that as well to to incorporate that. But uh, of course, the same can be done for any. Any miss uh, any melee weapon? We can we can set up chains, and uh, uh, I would uh, I would check uh, check on uh, Akroma on the on the forum. He's he's been doing some daggers and daggers that you know use the flurry and and do a lot of attacks. So uh, this is the short and sweet of it. How how we how we create some. Uh, how we create some uh, weapons, uh, how we define them within the game. Uh, all weapons of course need their 3D model and they also need their 2D representation uh, uh, from the item atlas. And uh, yeah, I hope you I hope you learned something or, or, or saw something that you could use. Uh, these, this code like always, uh, will be available on the forum. And uh, this 3D model, I will make it available for download as well, so so you can use it uh, within uh, within your projects as well. So, that's it for now. Thank you for watching.